Hi, I am Tara Pham. I am co-founder and CEO of Numina, and we use computer vision to make the real-time layer, thank you, need that, uh, the real-time layer to enable more responsive cities. So first, a bit about our team. Uh, my background is in public health research, studying how city design affects people's behaviors, and that led me to leading a number of civic data projects, uh, both at local and national levels for governments and philanthropy. Our CTO, Elon Goodman, was previously the CTO of Park Assist, uh, which uses computer vision to measure all kinds of uh, parking availability in multi-level garages. Uh, there he designed, manufactured, deployed, maintained 100,000 sensors in 24 countries. We're actually a very lean team of six, uh, coming from startup backgrounds, enterprise backgrounds, have scaled IoT very large. And we all care about cities. And we recognize that cities have no idea what's going on in their streets. So we set out to replace these guys. Um, most data collection right now is happening with people and clipboards. And it's slow, it's expensive, it's inaccurate. And it's not enough to fuel many of the century's next biggest innovations. So we are making the first API for streets. Uh, Numina is a full stack solution, starting with a sensor that mounts to light poles. And we use computer vision to measure all kinds of things in streets. We add extra analysis in the cloud, and we make that available to city agencies and companies via an API. Uh, we also have our own dashboard. And we live at the data creation layer because we want to enable developers and companies to build their best end solution. So our kind of beachhead into the market is that we make the first purpose-built computer vision sensor for streets and urban applications. I can get into details in Q&A, but basically we can deploy where power and connectivity is not readily available. And we have a high power GPU on board, so we're processing all the imagery at the edge. We only transmit very small data packets over 4G cell phone network, and that network connection also allows us to push software updates to the sensor, so it's rather future-proof. And on the sensor, we are doing this kind of analysis. So normally, we, as I mentioned, we're not recording video or transmitting imagery. This is from a benchmarking exercise we did in St. Louis, Missouri. But we are detecting pedestrians, bicycles, different types of vehicles, wheelchairs. We're getting into other things, dogs, bags of trash, puddles, kind of if you can see it, we can measure it. And unlike traditional traffic sensors, we're not just giving you counts. We're showing you paths, speeds, behaviors. Um, and actually, in this intersection, traditional traffic sensors, you might need about a dozen of them to collect what we're collecting with one sensor. Most of those sensors, cities are paying five to $30,000 each for. Because we're not usually um, saving or transmitting imagery, we are intent on providing intelligence without surveillance. We don't collect any personally identifiable information at the edge. And because this data is anonymous, we can recreate what's happening in a street without any sort of enforcement or, or privacy concerns. Um, and so this is our dashboard for urban planners. We are able to give them information they've never had before and essentially allow them to A-B test the built environment by analyzing how people move and interact with infrastructure. And because, again, the data is anonymous, we can provide this in data streams to private sector customers uh, where they can draw their own screen lines and, and polygons and essentially create an if this, then that for the public right of way. Um, one. Uh, most of our applications are actually right now focused on mobility and autonomous, but one city example is we're measuring pile above bags of trash and allowing the trash hauler to come when needed. We're already deployed in four cities. We have our next six projects going live later this year. Um, and for sake of time, I'm just going to jump ahead. We're focused on mobility, but once we're up on the light pole, there's many sectors we can serve. And that allows us to empower cities with data um, and allow companies to be stakeholders in making cities better. So uh, if you wanted to learn more, Elon, our CTO, is here with me. Come find us and, and join us. Thanks. All right. Round of applause. Stay right here for questions. Okay, judges, who would like to start? There's a couple of mics that you can share. There you go ahead. Hey, Tara, great presentation. I know we met previously at Workbench, which is an enterprise-focused fund. So I'm curious about your go-to-market. It sounds like you're selling into government, but then there's also opportunity to sell into private developers. Yeah, can you so, share more? so to date, we've been more focused on the distribution side, getting our sensors out. We've closed two cities in under 24 days from a cold email. So it's something we're actually good at doing, and that's kind of 
part of our competitive advantage. Um, but actually, later this year, we're working with a Big Ten university. We're working with Downtown Brooklyn Partnership, which is a huge business improvement district. Um, and then the way that we're actually partnering with AV companies right now, they've raised $80 billion in the past three years, and a lot of them are actually putting that into infrastructure and R&D now. So there are some situations where actually we're talking to automotive companies that would pay to deploy our sensors for the city. Um, and so to some extent, there's a la land grab aspect. We are trying to stay focused on actually finding a community where we can really go deep and build out the developer ecosystem. Sarah. Can you tell me how many sensors you would need to deploy in a city in order to have full coverage and what the cost of that is? We get this question a lot. So um, very much depends on the use cases. I think with autonomous, if we're getting really, really granular, we're going to want to deploy three to four sensors per intersection um, or per block face, you could, you could think of it. Uh, we charge the city $1,600 per sensor as a one-time hardware setup fee. Again, they're used to paying five to $30,000 for like a traffic camera or a puck under the pavement, something like that. Um, one thing that we're also interested in and one reason we're aligning with automotive is they deploy like us market by market, corridor by corridor. So we want to focus on the high interest areas first and actually explore how fusing our data sets with other mobile data sets, you know, companies like Mapillary or Carmera that are more fleet-based, um, can we actually expand the impact of our data by being ground truth and then sort of extrapolating out areas where we don't have sensors deployed? Who's next? Renaud. Um, what, what do you think the private opportunity is in terms of uh, size? Like, you're going to go after cash-trapped cities, and yes, it's to be cheaper to get the installation going, but how do you monetize outside of that? And uh, what's the competition lo looking like in that space? So we are starting um, our first kind of API product is focused on autonomous vehicle applications. And that's because we have a very unique position, a literally fixed position in streets that um, right now mobile data sets can't really replicate. Um, but the other kind of low hanging fruit for us are really in real estate insurance and logistics. So these are uh, companies that want to know footfall, um, safety. We can measure thing, behaviors like near misses, so when cars almost hit pedestrians. Um, and it's, it's pretty greenfield because this data set hasn't existed before. Um, so I, I don't have an exact number. Michael. So the question is, how much does it cost, sensor cost, <laughs> and how much does it cost to install it? It costs um, us right now about $1,000 from parts to install in the pool. Um, and we're doing very small batch manufacturing. We actually collect the money from the city and we go make the sensors locally. Um, and it, it doesn't really make sense to outsource a product like this right now overseas. Um, we'd love to get to a point where we don't have any CapEx involved with our purchase and we're purely a SaaS purchase for the city or a data license even. There are some cities where if you are a data license or a data product, they don't have to go through any procurement process. They can actually just choose you and go. And so as much as we can fall into their OPEX, the better. Any other questions? One last question. Anybody from the judges? Okay, Tara, thank you very much. Thank you. Why don't you go that way and pass to the next one?